What is up guys, so it's your boy guys and welcome back to yet again me using the trial version of FL Studio which is gonna change soon but welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm gonna show you guys how to make a pre-drop drum fill. I'm talking about this part. It's quite self-explanatory it's a drum fill that comes in right before the drums so how do you achieve them well it's quite simple but first of all you still need the drum fill so you can actually combine them into something that's your own you can find them in many places including my new drum kit gunsos bounce kit which is out now we have the link in the description or you can find them in quite a lot of free packs you can probably google them although I'm not trying to promote my stuff too much but the ones that i have in my kit are specifically made for you know trap beats because a lot of them can be simply, you know, some drum breaks or some some basic drum fills that aren't made with the intention of, you know, someone using them before a drop. I'm gonna pretend that I actually have no drum fills before the drop, so in this case it's gonna sound quite empty. Because it cuts right into the drop and there's no tension building up. I'm gonna use my new drum kit for the fills, so let's just drag some in and see what we can come up with so for starters i'm gonna use this lo-fi fill which is you know quite short but it can build up into something more unique so first things first i'm actually gonna make it on beat by right clicking the time knob and then setting it to uh, two beats so now it's more on beat than before you can still see that the waveform isn't quite aligned with the grid so i can just you know chop it up and then hold alt while you know moving it to make sure that it's actually on beat so now, even though it's kind of quiet, we can always link it to the mixer and then, you know, change the frequencies a bit, maybe boost it up. So we got the starting point. Now let's try finding something that's a little bit more aggressive, something that actually prepares you for what's gonna come next. I'm gonna use this pan fill which is really aggressive by the way. And now it's time to actually position it somehow that it first of all matches the grid, but it also sounds right because I might as well just place it, you know, randomly and then... But you actually have to place it in a way that it actually makes sense. First of all, visually, because you're gonna be using the grid to actually guide yourself where to place it. But also the tension has to be built up properly because otherwise it's gonna come in and there's still a short period of time that's still not the drop basically. So in this case, you know, it's gonna sound weird. So what I'm probably gonna do is have it this way. It's gonna start at the beginning of the third beat because you still need a little bit of time to breathe basically. So you could also link it to the mixer track if you wanna EQ it, which I suggest because a lot of these drum fills have a lot of low frequencies. They sometimes have even more low frequencies than the bass that you're using in the track. So, you know, hearing more bass in the pre-drop compared to the actual drop is gonna sound weird because you're getting used to the amount of bass in the pre-drop and then when the drop comes in, it feels like luster. So, you know, taking care of the frequencies is a good thing to do. Also adding a really subtle delay could really help setting it on the fourth point on the time knob playing with the volume in the input section and the feedback section as well. Maybe even changing the mix level in the mixer track as well. So that way it, it won't stop as abruptly when the drop comes in you can still barely hear it but it's you know it, it does make a difference. So we already have a pretty solid drum fill we might as well call it a day and that's it but it still kind of feels empty because we're only using the second half of the last bar before the drop so we could add another one and then make it fade in so i'm gonna use this oof fill but i'm only gonna use the first hit so i'm gonna get rid of these by you know cutting it and then deleting them and i'm gonna place it like this <laughs> And once again, I'm gonna link it in the mixer track to a new layer. I'm gonna EQ it a little bit just so it's not as punchy because I want this part to be more subtle. So we're actually using it as a transition for the main drum fill. We 
we could either automate the sample volume or the mixer track it's really up to you depends if you want to do something later on with either of those but for now i'm actually going to automate the sample volume or whatever this thing is called i'm going to move the automation so it starts here so we don't actually waste any more space i'm going to copy the value of the first point so we still have it on 80 percent so we actually don't have to zoom in this whole thing because i never get it right when i want to zoom out back so let's just decrease it and then play with the tension of the points we could also have these four continue as well but we could fade them out like this so we're gonna paste the value we're gonna add a new point right under it and then once again a new point and then fade it out so it's gonna sound like this even these won't end abruptly so all of them now should sound like this Now, this is already a pretty good drum fill. We could also add some vocals. This is really up to you if you want to use some, some vocal loops. There are a lot of packs that offer a lot of vocal chops, which are pretty melodic. So it depends on, on what scale you're in and if the vocals fit. So for this case, I'm actually going to use this perfect vocal. Perfect. And I'm going to place it in the middle of the fill. So like this. Perfect. And once again, I'm going to link it to a new track. I'm going to EQ it because there are a few frequencies that I'm not really a big fan of. Also, thank you, Messenger. So let's play with the frequencies a little bit. Perfect. Perfect. So now I'm actually going to add a delay to it. Once again, set it to the fourth point in the time section, then change the volume in the input section and the volume in the feedback section as well. Perfect. Perfect. Maybe increase it a little bit so you can you still want to hear the second perfect, but also you don't want it to be in your face. Perfect, perfect. You could also add a reverb effect to it, just a really, really subtle one playing with the H cut and the low cut as well as the size, but also turn down the wet level just so it won't have that long of a trail. Perfect, perfect. And honestly, I think this is it. We have a pretty solid drum fill. We made it in a quite short amount of time. You can get really creative with it. You can have a lot of vocals in it if you feel like it, if you know what you want to go for. It's a really flexible thing to do. It's really not set in stone on how to make a, a, a proper drum fill. But once you get the idea on, on the rhythm, what you want to achieve, you've got yourself a massive head start. But that's about it with this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you managed to learn something from it. And also, as I said in the beginning of the video, my new drum kit is out. So if you guys want to support me and also get some amazing sounds and amazing drums, you can click the link in the description. Also, also you can get it at 50% off for the next few days because I'm extending the sale since you guys love it so much. So once again, thank you so much for the support. It was your boy Ganso and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.